Good evening, everyone. I'm Lee McDonald, Director of Counseling, Health and Wellness for the District. I'd like to welcome you to our Senior College Planning Night for High School North. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear us okay. Uh, for some reason you can't, please know that the chat feature has been turned on. There's also a question and answer feature that you can use. I would prefer that you use the chat feature for questions as they come about this evening. We will do our best to answer all of the questions at the end of tonight's presentation. I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Lee Riley, uh, at High School North. He's our lead counselor there. Uh, there's two parts to this evening's presentation. Part one uh, is focused more on uh, an overview of best practices uh, with regards to college admissions and the planning process. Uh, Mr. Riley will be addressing the more nuts and bolts of the presentation. Uh, the materials tonight that we're using will be shared on the district website under uh, counseling, high school counseling, college admissions documents. Um, we'll make sure that those are available as well. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Bear with me for a minute. Obviously, we're, we're under unusual circumstances. Ideally, we'd be in the theater at High School North, uh, but uh, of course, during the pandemic, that's not possible. Um, and if at any point there's questions that are not answered, know that we're available to answer questions after the fact. Um, if there's questions specific to your son or daughter, I would ask that you address those uh, to your school counselor. I'll also add, Dr. McDonald, and good evening, everyone, that uh, counselors will be having follow-up question and answer sessions uh, with students over the next several days. Uh, they will be sending out Zoom links. So students, if you have any questions after tonight's presentation, and I'm sure you will, you'll have an opportunity to ask your counselor in uh, that Zoom session in the next few days. Thank you, Mr. Riley. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Hopefully that is loading okay. Um, before we get into the presentation, I do wanna highlight a few upcoming admissions events. Uh, number one, uh, I wanna mention that our, um, our college fairs, we know it because of the pandemic is not a possibility. Uh, that being said, there are many excellent options for our students in the coming weeks and months ahead. Uh, first and foremost, these are free options. The National Association of College Admissions Counseling has a number of college fairs where you can engage with college reps. Um, the link has been provided here. You could just Google NATCAC. Uh, same thing with the New Jersey Association of College Admissions Counseling, though their fairs are more focused on schools here in New Jersey. Um, for students looking to connect one-on-one -on -one with individual schools, we have a number of schools that have already signed up to do virtual visits uh, at High School North and High School South. A complete listing is through our Rep Visits website, which can be found in students' Naviance account. So that's a great opportunity to connect with, with, uh, with admissions reps one-to-one -one or in a small group setting as they come about. And those, those calendar and those dates are already available in Naviance. Uh, also next week, uh, a week from tomorrow, we will be hosting a financial aid night. You'll want to make sure that you attend that as well. I have a representative uh, from the Higher Education Student Assistance Authority here in New Jersey that will be going through the ins and outs of the college admissions pro process as it relates to financial aid. So I, I want to first just acknowledge um, the, the challenging times that we're in. Uh, you know, with that said, I hope that you and everyone in your family are doing well and, and uh, recognize that for the class of 2021, uh, it, these are highly unusual circumstances to say the least. Uh, if you go back two years, you, you think about what's transpired uh, in the last two years related to college admissions and, and what's played out across the country between some of the admission scandals, between uh, some of the additional pressures that have been faced, uh, and then of course the pandemic. There's a lot of unknowns heading into this process. Uh, we have done our best and will continue to do our best in staying up to, up to speed on what those changes are, uh, just through co conversations, not only with admissions reps, but also uh, virtual events for our counselors. Um, and we want, to want you to know that despite the unknowns, we're here to support you and your family through this process and make sure that you, you come out as best possible on the other end. So COVID-19, there are a lot of uncertainties as I just mentioned. Uh, the Harvard Graduate School of Education um, 
uh, created a conglomerate of close to 400 schools. Uh, this is going back four or five years ago and, and started to look at challenges in the admissions process. This is a statement uh, as part of the Making Care in Common project. And I wanna highlight it because it speaks to what many schools are the message that they want our students and our families to know that they recognize the challenges of COVID-19, they recognize um, what is happening across the, the country and that there's many uncertainties and challenges and, and they're gonna work with families and adjust accordingly to make sure that admissions process um, you know, is, is as fair as possible and that they're not just looking at um, you know, students that might have been disadvantaged because of this process in a different light. With that said, one of their emphasis is on self-care. They, they understand that families are struggling, people are struggling, uh, no matter uh, what your background is, race, religion, uh, this pandemic has hit us all in many different ways. And they wanna re recognize that students and emphasize uh, that self-care should be the priority and taking time for oneself and that uh, that should be something with an emphasis on one's family. The academic component is another piece. There's no question if you look at the spring of 2020 uh, and going back to March and what transpired over the rest of the year, uh, just about every district, every state handled things a little bit differently. Um, their message is that they're not going to hold students uh, at a disadvantage for what transpired during that time. Uh, I will say in West Windsor Plainsboro, I, I think we had the, the right approach in the sense of uh, compassion over compliance. Uh, we were certainly flexible with our grading practices, uh, but at the end of the day, our, our grading process, essentially, as far as the transcript goes, uh, stayed the same. And I think that that will serve our students as best as possible, given what's transpired. Uh, to that end, I do believe for our seniors, the, the fall grades are going to be really critical. They're going to want to know um, how students are, you know, rebounding, if you will, from that spring of the junior year and, and how they're kind of uh, uh, dealing with the challenges, uh, recognizing that nobody's going to be perfect. Service. Uh, they also recognize that the opportunities that may have been there as far as uh, community service and whatnot um, may not have been there, what you were planning to do, but they, they know that certainly there were other opportunities for families um, to, to be able to um, uh, provide opportunities that came about because of the pandemic. So that's something that uh, we want to make sure that you understand that, uh, you know, even though there's limitations in terms of what you might be able to do in person, you know, hopefully there's opportunities that came about because of the situation as well. Family, far too often is a misperception that uh, students that have to take care of their family, whether that's caring for a loved one or a sibling, are in a place where uh, that doesn't count. I think then you can make the argument that um, these types of service opportunities uh, are, are probably more important than some something that might have been uh, something that was just done to kind of pad the resume. So I think they want to make sure that that's clear for students and that they value substantial family contributions. Same thing with extracurriculars, no question. Look, athletics were canceled this fall in the district. There's other opportunities that uh, were not, uh, students did not have a chance to partake in this spring. Um, whether that was uh, sports, uh, other clubs, trips, things of that nature, um, and they recognize that that's not going to be held against our students because they weren't able to do that. I also want to tackle the probably the elephant in the room with when it comes to the, the admissions process for the class of 2021. Um, the SATs uh, and ACTs, um, they are back up and running. Um, I know for, for us in district, we were forced to cancel the August assessment. Um, we're in the process of making sure there are more seats available for the October 3rd uh, assessment. So if you're still looking to get in on that assessment, SAT, which will be administered at South, please check the College Board website uh, for an update on, on spots available. And those, as, as we can, we will continue to run those assessments. But the big message is here that we want to make sure that students understand that two thirds of colleges nationwide, some of your best in the country have gone test optional. That means they're not going to hold it against you if you didn't have that opportunity, or if you don't, if you choose not to submit your scores. So I know we'll be talking about that a little bit later with Mr. Riley's presentation, but that's not going to be held against you. And I think it's going to force, in my opinion, a more holistic process and looking at uh, the academic side, first and foremost, the good news for our students, you're in a phenomenal district, a well-regarded district where 
we have a level of rigor. Uh, we have a great program of studies. Students have a lot of opportunities. If you're graduating from the district, in my opinion, you're well positioned to land at a solid four-year college. So just a couple best practices uh, when it comes to the admissions process heading into the senior year, certainly a lot of students have their list, if you will. Now's the opportunity to kind of tweak that list, look back at some of the schools. Um, there's no exact formula, but I think generally speaking, we want students to think about what are some of the reach schools. Uh, if you look at some of the data that's available, and we'll talk about what these things are later, um, you know, any school where you might be slightly below that school's profile would be a, really a reach. I would also throw in, if you're applying to an Ivy League institution, um, you know, short of having your last name on a building uh, or, or, or perhaps uh, being uh, a stud quarterback or trombone player, it's gonna be very difficult for you to get into those institutions and that's no knock on our students, that's just a reality with the admissions process. Uh, target schools, somewhere where you look at that profile and you're, you're on par with what they typically admit and safety schools somewhere where you're going to exceed those school standards. Uh, recognizing no matter what, there's nothing guaranteed in admissions, we know that. So it's a very uh, subjective process, uh, but to that end, we wanna make sure every school you have on your list is one that you would attend if you got in and that was your only choice, because that's really critical, because sometimes students go crazy. A school will say, hey, here's a free application. You wanna really think through that and make sure that's a school you would end up going to. Um, so. With that said, I'm gonna talk through just a couple other best practices, creating an application calendar, find your format. Um, you can see here, there's a lot of different dates that you're gonna to have to keep up with, whether that's teacher recommendation reminders, financial aid night uh, next week, um, com essay completion tasks, things that you've gotta do, mid-year reports, find your platform, Google, hard copy, Outlook, whatever works for you. Make sure you have something that keeps you organized. Uh, requirements, this might seem silly, um, but there are times where students overlook some of the requirements of an application, right? Uh, did they submit everything uh, as an essay too long or too short? You know, if it says 300 words or less, uh, don't go 303, right? It makes a, it makes a difference and admissions officers are gonna look at that. Um, if you send your documents and they say, hey, we're missing a couple things, not to worry. The big thing is getting that application in by that deadline. Uh, schools are used to getting things in different pieces. I know Mr. Riley's gonna highlight that, so I'm gonna move forward. Um, keeping track of everything. Again, pick your, pick your platform, Google Classroom, um, traditional paper, pencil, whatever works. Keep everything in one spot where you can have it organized, and that way, you know, if there's something that's not, uh, that needs to be found, you have an easy way to track that. The essay, no question, the essay has continued to be uh, more important in the application. Uh, process, uh, I would say even more so this year with, with the absence of perhaps SAT or ACT score, it's really a student's uh, opportunity to be their voice of their application, uh, to talk about what makes them unique and what will they bring ultimately to that school's campus. Um, I know that our counselors did an amazing workshop in the spring uh, uh, online. There's a number of tutorials out there. If you need help, please ask, uh, but it is very important that our students spend time you know, polishing that essay and, and not necessarily coming across as an English professor or that they had 30 different people look at it and sounding like a 30 year old. So we want to make sure that it's also not just revamping or, or rehashing what's on their resume. Teacher recommendations. I know Mr. Riley will talk about this process a little bit. Um, you know, if you haven't asked already, it's a little late, but you want to get on that as the ASAP. Uh, we want to make sure that you're uh, adhering to all the parameters, right? Um, that a college might ask, you know, and if, for example, an engineering school within a college university might perhaps um, ask you for a letter from a science or math uh, teacher. So you just have to pay attention to those things. I know Mr. Riley will highlight this. I'm gonna say waive your right to access, okay? What that means is that you're waiving your right to the actual teacher recommendation or counselor recommendation. Um, our, our teachers, our counselors, if they're not going to write an excellent recommendation for you, they will, they will, they will not do that for you. So we're, we're in the business of opening as many doors as possible. Um, and all this means is that if you get into that particular institution, a year and a half from now, when you step foot on campus, you can go down to the Dean's office and look at the, uh, the, the teacher recommendation. You're not gonna be able to see it now, regardless whether you wave, wave your right or not. But the big difference is if you don't wave your right, uh, it, it just, it, it makes your recommendation and your kind of package, if you will, less authentic. 
the interview, absolutely take up any opportunity to interview. You're certainly gonna find a lot of these in Zoom uh, right now, but you wanna make sure that um, you are taking advantage of that. You know, you don't have to be scripted. You wanna dress appropriately, have questions for that college or university. It may be with an admissions rep, it may be with somebody else, uh, an alumni, uh, but it gives them a chance to match a name uh, with a face and an application. So by all means, if you get that opportunity, take advantage of it. Best application practices, uh, you know, these are, are straightforward in terms of just staying calm, organized, being accurate, following through, maintaining integrity, just really key pieces. At the end of the day, the message you're gonna hear from uh, uh, myself and our counselors is that this is about finding that right fit. Uh, I can't tell you how many times students go through this process and a school that wasn't even on their radar, uh, it ends up being a school that they fall in love with, right? So. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence, um, that you're looking at something holistically and not just, you know, a bumper sticker school or what you heard might be a good fit for you. You've got to figure that out along the way. And we're here to help students and families navigate that, that field. But there are a lot of amazing opportunities here for us in the Northeast for our kids. And that's a very good thing. So these are a couple of references, really good websites. As I said before, uh, I will post this on the district website under um, departments, counseling, high school counseling, college admissions. So with that said, I'm gonna stop my share, turn it over to Mr. Riley. Uh, we will certainly take some questions at the end, just keep them coming in the thread, we'll do our best, but please keep them general. If there's specific questions, I would ask you for that to your daughter, son or daughter's uh, uh, school counselor. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. McDonald, I appreciate that. Uh, hello again, everyone, uh, bear with me as I Share the screen here. Okay, so uh, as Dr. McDonald mentioned, it's it's hard not to uh, talk about the elephant in the room, which is we're doing this virtually this year, and it's certainly a strange circumstance. Um, this has created a lot of anxiety over the past uh, several months uh, for parents and students, but certainly when you add the prospect of college applications and planning those next steps, uh, I know that, that, is, that certainly increases. We are also here for them on a daily basis, whether that be via uh, in-person or via Zoom sessions or Google Chats. We spend a lot of time answering questions for our seniors each fall, just because this process is so new. So please keep in mind, kids and parents, that we are here to answer those small questions, even if you have two or three questions on a weekly basis about different transcripts and uh, di you know, different requirements for schools. We realize this is the first time that you're doing this, but since we have some experience with this year after year, um, we can really lend our experience and expertise in this department. So please don't, uh, don't be bashful about about asking questions. Um, so really the first step, if you just wanna look at the, the big picture, the what should I be doing now? Um, now that we've started school and you're comfortably into the Zoom sessions and um, you know, the class rotations and everything else, when it comes to the college front, what you should be doing on your own is really finalizing an initial list of schools. Now I say an initial list because we recognize that this will change throughout the fall and even into the winter. Um, while it's true that the majority of students will request transcripts and complete applications during the months of October and November, um, a lot of schools have very flexible deadlines that extend uh, through the winter and even into the spring. So with that said, we encourage kids to apply early um, to certainly make those deadlines. If a school has an open or rolling deadline, uh, we encourage kids to get in those applications, uh, generally prior to uh, the Thanksgiving or, or fall recess, um, uh, so that they are not in a situation uh, in the spring where uh, a certain college or university has accepted, filled a lot of those admission spots. Because at that point, uh, it does sometimes get a little bit uh, tougher. But there is some flexibility when it comes to uh, when you need to turn in your applications and when things are due. So it is important to pay attention to deadlines and to prioritize those schools that have earlier deadlines. 
The earliest deadlines that we generally come across are October 15th. Uh, and that is certainly for a very few schools, but you, know, you should look at uh, your application deadlines to make sure um, to determine when your earliest application is due. Because if you do have an October 15th application, we ask that you notify your teachers, you notify your counselor uh, via Naviance at least three weeks prior to that deadline. And that's so that we can process all of the uh, forms that we need to send to them electronically. Um, so the October 15th deadline would be um, coming up for a few of you. Uh, for a lot of schools, de they have deadlines or rolling admissions dates uh, in the month of November. So for a lot of you, the application process is really gonna ramp up when it comes to completing the Common App or the Coalition App during the end of October and the beginning of November. Here's the good news. For 95% of students, uh, most of your applications will be finished by the time we leave for winter break. Uh, and really the, the height of the application season does, as I mentioned, occur in November. So this is really a, a first marking period into early second marking period kind of time crunch where you're focusing on schoolwork and the college application process, and then it passes. So uh, please know that you're going to, we'll be through this before you know it, and you'll be able to again focus exclusively on academics and everything's that are, everything else that's going on in your busy lives. Uh, I realize a lot of you have done things for the college application process already over the summer. One of the two important things you need to do is um, keep track, is certainly develop a list of schools and possible application deadlines. And the second thing would be to create a common application account or a coalition application account. Uh, there are hundreds of schools that accept a single application uh, for the college admissions process. I believe there are between probably up to around 700 schools that accept the common application and coalition application is uh, coming up on 200 at last, last check. So that can really be helpful when it comes to filling out multiple applications. Uh, our average student this fall will probably complete somewhere between eight and 10 applications. However, if you have seven or eight schools that accept one common application or a coalition application, uh, that greatly reduces the amount of work that you need to focus on at home. So uh, colleges have come to a common application uh, to really simplify the process for students. Uh, if you haven't created a Common App account or you're not sure which application methods your colleges accept, um, you can find that in Naviance by looking up your colleges. Uh, we've got a prospective colleges tab in Naviance where you can add schools and take a look at the different methods of application or you can simply go to those schools' websites and understand what they accept. Many schools accept multiple um, methods of application. So they might accept the common application or you might be able to also apply directly through the school. A question we often receive is, is there an advantage to applying one way or another? And the answer is no. Uh, if a school allows you to apply in multiple ways, uh, there will be no advantage to using one method over the other is whatever is most convenient for you. Keeping track of usernames and passwords, as in everything else in your life, is very important. So um, you might want to develop one common username password uh, for combination for your college applications if you haven't already done so. But at the least, as Dr. McDonald mentioned, have a Google Doc, um, have a note, uh, a notepad note, Word doc, share it with uh, a parent, so that you can keep track of all of these passwords. And likewise, you can use Naviance, of course, to pay attention to application deadlines, uh, but you can also make a list of application deadlines as well uh, using Google or whatever platform you're comfortable with. Uh, it's really important for you to really be steering this proverbial ship through the fall. So you always need to know what's coming up next and uh, what the expectations are for those different schools. Just mentioned a little bit about Common App and Coalition App. These might be new terms to parents. Some parents might remember the Common App uh, since uh, that's been a, uh, around for a while. Coalition application is a little bit of a newer platform, uh, but it's really similar in that the member schools for the Coalition application are looking to save students time by um, allowing them to complete one application and then send that to multiple schools.
So the next few slides, since the Common App is, is still a lot more popular uh, and more widely utilized, the next few slides are gonna focus on uh, the Common Application and what students should be doing on Common App prior to putting in transcript requests at the high school. So for Common App schools, one of the first things they'll ask you to do after you complete an account is enter in demographic information. The most important part of your demographic information for our purposes is listing West Windsor Plainsboro High School North as your current high school. Uh, that will again allow your Common App account to eventually sync with your Naviance account. So this is a very important that you list our school correctly um, and you can do it certainly a simple search by zip code and pull up our high school. Uh, so you can complete the demographic information, the rest of it, at any point in time uh, before you submit your application. The second thing you're gonna do after you complete the demographic information for Common App is you can begin to add colleges to your Common App account. Now it's important to know that you can always edit the colleges on your Common App lists. You can add and delete colleges all throughout the process. Just because you add a college does not mean that you need to submit an application for that college. Um, this is important because uh, we understand that you might change where you were applying uh, several times throughout the fall. Uh, but you can, uh, you can begin with initial list and then edit it as you go along. The first time uh, you add a college to Common App, under the college information, you're gonna see something called recommendations and, fer and FERPA. And this is something that Dr. McDonald mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, in order for Naviance to, in order for you to link your Common App account with Naviance, uh, you're going to have to have signed off on your FERPA waiver. As Dr. McDonald mentioned, the FERPA waiver um, is simply a privacy waiver uh, where we ask you to waive your rights to view your recommendations once you've uh, been enrolled at that particular institution. You can, under no circumstances, view teacher or counselor recommendations or any other materials prior to your acceptance and matriculation at a certain university. So the advantage of signing the FERPA waiver is it lets the college or university know um, that you're comfortable with the letters of recommendation that you're sending, and uh, the college or university will then put a lot more stock and emphasis uh, on the recommendation from teachers and counselors. A teacher or a counselor would not agree to write you a recommendation if it weren't going to be absolutely positive and put you in the best terms. So if you have any more questions about recommendations or, or the FERPA waiver, you can certainly ask your counselor uh, during one of the, uh, the follow-up sessions that you will have an, uh, an opportunity to take part of this week. So here's just another screenshot of the FERPA waiver. You only need to sign this waiver once. So students, once you complete this FERPA authorization for one school, uh, it will fill for all schools, but you cannot go back and edit it, which is why we're um, emphasizing now that you do need to sign off on this recommendation for at least one of your schools and waive your right to access so that again, you can link your Common App account with Naviance successfully and then we can begin to send materials to Common App schools. Uh, talk a, let me talk a little bit about uh, recommendations. Uh, we've asked you students, and I'll let you parents know in the spring, uh, that uh, many colleges will accept recommendations from teachers. Uh, the number of recommendations that, that they will accept varies. Uh, many colleges don't accept any. Uh, a good example would be larger schools uh, like a Rutgers University that just doesn't have time to read uh, all of those recommendations. Uh, but many smaller schools will recommend or require a minimum number of recommendations. Generally, the minimum number that, for schools that want recommendations, the minimum number that they will require would be one. Uh, but some will, schools will accept two or even three. We let the students know that they can ask two teachers for letter of recommendation, but we do not uh, want them to ask for more than two letters from classroom teachers because it simply becomes too overwhelming uh, for the colleges. And quite simply, most schools do not want more than two from classroom teachers. In addition to your teacher recommendations, you're also going to receive a counselor recommendation for every school that you apply to. And that comes automatically. So your counselor will write you a recommendation. Um, the, the screen we have up now from Common App is 
uh, a section, a recommender section, where you are actually allowed for some schools to invite an outside recommender in addition to your school recommenders to give you a letter of reference. So for some schools, for some common app schools that you apply to, they will allow you to invite an outside recommender. An example of an outside recommender might be um, a youth minister from your church or a board member from a local community service organization that you volunteered your time with or a travel soccer coach, somebody that you feel knows you well outside of the academic setting. So that is certainly okay. If you wanna take advantage of uh, outside recommenders through Common App, you can do so simply by listing that recommender's name and their email address. When that outside recommender submits a recommendation, it will go right to your Common App account. Again, you won't be able to see it, but that recommendation will go along with your application when you apply to schools. Early decision. Uh, we really haven't talked yet about ways that you can apply to schools in terms of uh, application status. Uh, but when you apply by certain deadlines, uh, there are certain statuses that you can apply for. And one of these is called early decision. Uh, an early decision agreement, uh, when you're applying to a school via early decision, really what that is is a binding agreement, a contract between the student, the parent, and the school. And that agreement would be if the student is accepted by the school, they will indeed be attending. That is a binding agreement. Uh, it's not something that you can easily back out of. So if you have found a college that you are absolutely set on and you've talked to uh, students and if you've talked to your parent and your parent is in complete agreement uh, that this school is the absolute perfect school for you and even if you got into all the schools you were applying to, you would still 100% be committed to uh, this number one school on your list, you could go ahead and apply early decision. Um, the upside of that for some schools, because parents are probably thinking, you know, what is the advantage of that? The advantage of that is if a school understands that you are definitely committed to attending if they accept you, um, sometimes the acceptance percentages for early decision applicants is a little bit higher than other applicants. And that makes sense, right? Because the school knows that you are absolutely committing to their institution. It, it uh, also raises um, a statistic called yield, which is very important to the schools um, in the rankings process for national magazines and other publications. So they want a higher percentage of students that they accept to end up attending the school. Obviously, any student who applies early decision, decision is going to be attending that school so it increases the college's yield number. Um, we don't encourage early decision for most students. We would uh, prefer in most cases that you do have some flexibility. Uh, students and parents, it might seem like during the fall season that everyone has a son or daughter that is applying early decision to at least one school. Um, I wanna let you know that statistically that is not the case. Um, I would say on average somewhere between 20 and maybe 30% of our students apply early decision to a school each fall. So the majority of our students are not applying with a binding agreement to one school or another. And not every school has an early decision agreement in any case. If you do decide to apply early decision students, uh, you will have to invite your parent to sign off on that agreement. And you also have to invite your counselor to sign off on that agreement. The reason why the common application and common app schools require that is because they want to make sure that that decision has not been made in haste and that that was a well thought out decision since certainly there are financial implications to being accepted to a school and agreeing to attend. Uh, as with anything else, if you're considering applying early decision to a school, we would encourage you to talk to your counselor uh, about that decision. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, your counselor will need to sign off on that agreement through Common App. Um, so it's important that you've had uh, a conversation with your counselor prior to, prior to the early decision agreement. Uh, since it's a question that sometimes comes up, some schools, in addition to having an early decision deadline of usually November 1st or November 15th, additionally have an early decision two deadline, which generally occurs right around January 1st. Um, this 
started rising in popularity a few years ago. Um, and the colleges, the reason the colleges have the early decision two agreements is to attract students that might have applied early decision to another school and not been accepted, but they now want to commit to their second favorite school, so to speak, or a school that has now become their number one choice. Again, for those schools that have early decision two agreements, the objective of having that agreement would be to increase their yield and to get a clearer picture of which students are truly committed to those institutions. So you can apply early decision to one school and then after you get, if you get that decision back and you have not been accepted, you are, students are allowed to apply early decision two to a second school. Um, but certainly you can't apply early decision one and early decision two at the same time, because naturally if your ED agreement came back as an acceptance, you would then have to rescind the early decision two application. So we can answer more questions about early decision in our smaller counselor sessions. Uh, these next two screens are from Naviance. Naviance is an electronic platform that we use. Uh, it's certainly the most popular of its kind across the nation, used by thousands of high schools now. Um, and it allows counselors and teachers uh, to send documents electronically directly to colleges. So students are not only able to research colleges and do a lot of college and career planning on Naviance, but uh, one of the nicest parts of the platform from a, a high school counselor's perspective is being able to manage this application process. So every high school senior at, at North has an account and uh, the counselors of course have accounts as well, as well as most of the teachers. Uh, counselors and teachers, we will upload our documents through Naviance, and as students make requests for colleges, we will then be able to send those requests directly to colleges, or for Common App, we will send those requests directly to the Common Application Platform, which will then in turn send those uh, applications on to colleges. I mentioned the FERPA waiver when we were talking about Common App. The first thing that students will need to do uh, before they request transcripts through Naviance is to match their Common App and Naviance accounts. As I mentioned, Common App is unique in that uh, for non-Common App schools, we send admissions materials directly from High School North uh, to those schools' admissions office. But for Common App schools, we send all of our materials directly from the high school to the Common App platform. Then once a student applies through Common App, all of those materials go directly to the Common App schools. So matching accounts is an important first step on Naviance. You can do that under the Colleges I'm Applying To section. And if you've not signed your FERPA waiver, you won't be able to match your accounts. So that's the first thing you need to do under Colleges I'm Applying To. Adding transcript requests is really easy. Um, I do have an error here. This arrow, this yellow arrow that I'm hovering over, is pointed to colleges I'm thinking about, but you should really be pointing to colleges I'm applying to. You will be adding requests this year uh, directly to the colleges I'm applying to screen. And this screenshot below of colleges I'm applying to uh, shows what that screen uh, will look like once you add a college. This, I guess, magenta, and you can correct me in the chat, uh, this button here with the plus sign on it, uh, is what you would click on to add colleges. And again, you will have the ability, students, to add and delete colleges and edit colleges throughout the fall. We understand that you might initially put in a request and then you might not end up applying to that school. So you can come back and delete that at a later date. I wanna make a very important note though, and that is written in yellow. For Common App Schools, we ask that you not add Common App Schools to your Naviance account under colleges I'm applying to until and unless you have also added those schools to your Common App account, all right? Remember, Naviance talks to Common App. So if you have a school that you've added to Naviance that's not on your Common App account, we won't be able to send or upload any materials. So it is very important that you take care of your Common App schools in that order. Common App first and then Naviance. Okay, so once you click on that plus button, you will be able to indicate the school to which you're going to apply and uh, the, the way you are applying the method of application and the school deadline. And this is what that screen is going to look like. 
So which college you're going to apply to, what is your application type? For this student, it would be early decision, November 1st, but each school is gonna have several different deadlines. And importantly, how are you applying? Are you using the Common App or you are, apply, are you applying directly through that school? So adding transcript requests is, Naviance makes it very simple. Um, along with transcript requests, we talked a little bit about teacher recommendations, counselor recommendations. Uh, you do need to let your teachers know again in the fall uh, that you are applying. Now, I mentioned that probably 100 teachers in the building, almost all of our teachers have Naviance accounts. So when you add application requests, you can indicate to the teachers uh, which applications uh, you would like them to write for, and those teachers will be able to see your college admissions deadlines. However, I would encourage that each of you send a separate email to your teachers uh, indicating your earliest college deadline, just so that they are aware um, several weeks prior to that earlier deadline when they need to upload their materials. Once teachers, teachers and counselors have uploaded their recommendations and their materials one time, it's very easy to send after that. It's just that initial upload that takes some time uh, because they are writing their recommendation. So if you have an October 15th deadline, I would encourage you sometime in the next week or so to send an email, a nice email to your teachers that are going to write for you and say, hey, I just wanna let you know, I do have an October 15th deadline. So I'm gonna send you letters of recommendation requests through Naviance. And if you could upload your materials by that initial deadline, that would be great, okay? That will keep them on the same page and make sure that all materials are received by the colleges in a timely fashion. This is what the teacher recommendation request in Naviance again looks like. A lot of you did this in the spring, and you can update this again, again in the fall. We've made one key change in the fall. Uh, we've given students the capability to request recommendations for specific colleges. You'll see that the second college on this list, Muhlenberg, uh, only, only requires one recommendation. So for instance, if a student had asked two teachers to write for them, um, but they only wanted to send one, this would allow this feature allows students to select which teacher would write for which schools. Um, and again, you'll see, as I mentioned prior, a school like the University of South Alabama does not require or want any teacher recommendations. So that is not at all unusual for some schools. However, the counselor recommendation will go directly to the schools regardless. Before counselors and teachers write your recommendation, we do ask that you complete some questions to help us uh, better understand your college plans, and maybe some things about you that we might not have uh, been aware of uh, over the past several years. So we do have surveys under, listed under post-secondary plans uh, that you can complete. We have a student input survey for teachers and uh, counselors. And again, we would ask you to complete those prior to putting in your transcript requests. If you do not do this, you will probably get a note from your counselor asking you to do so uh, before we can send your recommendations. Again, we want input from you uh, so that you can play a part in your recommendation. Likewise, for parents, we have a survey as well that you can complete under post-secondary plans. So parents can give input uh, that we will utilize when we're writing your recommendation as well. And that would be great. Some important reminders. Um, we ask you to give us plenty of notice and teach us plenty of notice so that we have sufficient time to uh, construct and upload what we need to uh, send via Naviance. Um, you are, of course, one person, but uh, as I mentioned prior, uh, the average student this fall will apply to eight to 10 colleges, multiply that times 385 seniors, and that's a lot of transcript requests. Um, all of our transcript requests in terms of the send feature are funneled through one wonderful administrative assistant in our office, Mrs. Whitby. So um, it is important that you give us plenty of time to pull all of this together. Uh, but this is important uh, to this first bullet point. You may absolutely add transcript requests before you submit your applications. So in other words, you can list transcript requests this week, even if your first deadline isn't for several weeks, and even if you're not gonna send your materials for several weeks, you can still give us a heads up, so to speak, and let us know um, where you're going to apply. So if you have an October 15th deadline, 
um, we would ask you by the end of next week to certainly have that request in Naviance. Um, again, I've mentioned this before, uh, so I hate to be redundant, but this is important. You must add colleges to your Common App account prior to making those transcript requests in Naviance. If you're talking about non-Common App schools, this does not matter. But for Common App schools, you have to have those listed in Common App or the process of sending will not work with Naviance. And again, that's gonna prompt some slowdowns on our end um, and that makes it more difficult uh, for us. So please pay attention to that. Um, I also mentioned this earlier, if you're applying to early decision to a Common App school, you must sign your ED agreement in Common App prior to making a request in Naviance. So uh, once you indicate in Common App that you're applying early decision to a school, an ED agreement will pop up. Uh, you'll be asked to sign off on that and you'll also be prompted to send a request to a parent so that they can agree with your ED agreement as well. Rutgers is a little bit different, and Rutgers gets their own slide, not only because they're our state university, but because uh, we'll probably have close to 200 out of our 385 seniors submit an application to Rutgers. Rutgers has a very easy application, and in fact, Rutgers doesn't look for teacher or counselor recommendations. So you can fill out an online application directly through Rutgers, and they, along with a lot of other schools nationally, have what's called a self-reported academic record. Uh, that's simply a transcript that you will fill out um, on your own and submit to them. They don't require an official transcript directly from the high school until you commit to attending the school next May. So the Rutgers application, you can log on to Rutgers and get started with that pretty quickly. Um, and the SRAR, which is the self-reported academic record, you can also complete pretty quickly as well. You all have a copy of your course history in Genesis and all of the information you need for the SRAR can be found in that course history. If you have any questions about Rutgers, um, certainly let us know. Summary of important parts. So I've done a lot of talking and here's really what it comes down to. Uh, the guidance counselor, we are responsible not only for helping you through this, communicating with you, giving our advice, um, but we also supply recommendations, transcripts, secondary school reports and school profiles to every school uh, you're applying to. And our aim is to get them there in a timely fashion. Um, the teachers add their recommendations as well so that the colleges have input from uh, multiple professionals that you've worked with over the past several years. What is your responsibility? First and foremost, it's to keep track of deadlines and accounts and usernames and essays and things like that. So um, the college applications themselves are not really that involved in terms of the demographic piece. They're pretty easy to complete. Um, certainly the essays and supplemental questions can take a little bit longer to complete. So we ask that you stay on top of this process and that you're aware of deadlines. And if, you're, if it's a little tough for you to get organized, this is a great time to involve a parent in this process. We don't want mom or dad running the show here. We really want you to uh, quarterback this process on your own. Um, but it's okay if mom or dad is looking over your shoulder because obviously all of this is important as well. Another thing I haven't mentioned at all, uh, but uh, Dr. McDonald mentioned a little bit earlier, SAT and ACT scores. If you did have the opportunity to take a standardized test last fall or last winter, you do have the option of sending those scores to schools. The high school, uh, we do not send your scores directly to colleges. You need to do that by logging into your College Board account or your ACT account and selecting individual schools uh, to send those scores to. Um, and again, this would just be for students that have had the opportunity to take that test. If it's been a year since you took the test, maybe you took the test one time and you weren't really happy with your scores and you're not sure whether you should send a score or not, that's what we're here for. That's what your counselor's here for. So talk to us. Um, if you're not comfortable talking with us in a breakout session with you know, 50 other seniors, uh, then set up an individual one-on-one uh, -on -one session with your counselor and talk a little bit about your SAT or ACT scores. As Dr. McDonald mentioned, these are unusual times when it comes to standardized testing. And the majority of kids across the nation will have not had the chance to take a standardized test. Therefore, colleges are not going to emphasize those in your college application and in that process. Um, 
they are going to endeavor this year more than ever to emphasize what's holistic review. And that's looking at you as more than a test score, as more than a grade point average, um, looking at you as an individual. Um, I'm an optimist. So for me, uh, thinking about the college is getting to look at you and really being forced to look beyond those objective scores is really exciting. Um, so I think we're going to have great outcomes this fall. Uh, you certainly go to a wonderful high school, um, the top ranked public high school in the state of New Jersey, and uh, one with perennial national recognition, just because of the accomplishments of you. And I, that's going to really be an advantage this year, as schools aren't able to rely on those standardized test scores. Um, if you are signed up for a test this fall, that's great. Um, if that test ends up happening, that's great. If it ends up being canceled sometime in October or November, that is absolutely okay. Um, this will not have a negative impact on your admissions decision. Uh, the colleges have set out to make sure that that is so. And if you have questions about that um, or you're doubting that at all, um, each college has dozens and dozens of admissions counselors that would be willing to talk with you about your individual situation or your specific questions, your worries, and help you to feel better through this process. It's important to note that everyone, student, counselor, teacher, we're working at the same time on the same goal uh, to get all of these materials where you want us to send them. And again, this is all going to be pretty well wrapped up in the next eight weeks or so. Um, so yes, it's gonna be a little bit more than you're used to over first marking period of the fall, but um, there is a light on the horizon when it comes to the application process. Final thoughts. Um, dropping a class after you send out transcripts is of course discouraged. Uh, colleges not only look at the courses that you've selected through your first three years of high school, but they of course look at the courses in progress. Um, so if you were to apply to a college in November and then you drop two AP classes in December, that's gonna be bad, uh, obviously. You're going to need to notify them of those schedule changes and they're gonna need a really good explanation in order for that not to be a detrimental effect on your application. Uh, so of course, we wanna make sure that you have the understanding that you're keeping your, your classes in progress as is through the second semester. When you're looking at college applications, you might see um, mid-year grade forms and wonder what those are. A lot of colleges like to check, check up on seniors halfway through the school year. Even if they've reached an admission decision for you and you've been accepted, they like to see how you've done over the first semester. And for some colleges that haven't reached decisions, uh, that can be an opportunity for you to demonstrate again how well you're doing in your classes during the fall. So keep up the good work in those senior year classes because you will have the opportunity to provide schools in mid-January with uh, grades for the first semester. Dr. McDonald mentioned uh, virtual rep visits during uh, either the student lunch or after school. Those are a wonderful, opportunity to get to meet some admissions counselors. Uh, a lot of the admissions counselors that attend these virtual visits are the counselors assigned to do the first read on your application. In other words, when your application is submitted, the first person from that admissions office that is assigned to read that application might be the person that you are meeting with over Zoom. So take a look at the schedule and if you have the opportunity uh, certainly for schools that you're really interested in, I would take advantage of that. We have a lot of rep visits that love to meet with our students every year. And so uh, again, that schedule is posted in Naviance and we'll have Zoom links for each of those meetings posted uh, within a few days of the representative visiting. We also have a class of 2021 Google Classroom just for guidance. And the class code is here on the screen. Um, if I move off of this slide too quickly or you forget to write it down, you can just ask us. Uh, but the join code is right there. We encourage everybody, every student, to join this uh, Google Classroom class code so that when we have information that is unique to seniors, particularly with college admissions or graduation information, we can post that and get that out to you as quickly as possible. So yes, we do use Naviance for communication, but Google Classroom is great as well. So um, please join the class of 2021. Google Classrooms. And as I mentioned uh, previously, of course you're gonna have questions with this. Uh, a lot of this I ran through, but there's so much more um, that 
so much more detail that you might have questions about, certainly specific to your process. So for that reason, counselors are gonna be hosting individual Zoom sessions over the next several days. Um, if you haven't gotten an invitation or a communication from your counselor yet, you'll probably get something tomorrow or you could reach out to them uh, via email and ask them to send you a code or an invitation. There's no absolute rush to get in these transcript requests overnight. Um, I will be turning on the transcript request feature tomorrow morning. So if you logged on to Naviance right now or after this presentation, uh, you wouldn't see that little plus sign. You wouldn't have the opportunity to add colleges and transcript requests. I will turn that on tomorrow morning. I wanted to wait until we got through this presentation so that you could have a little bit of background. But also feel free to wait to put in those initial lists of colleges until after you've met with your counselors this week and had a chance to answer questions and ask questions. Um, again, this process can seem a little bit daunting since this is the first time uh, that you are going through it. And as parents, we understand that if this is the first time going through it, uh, certainly there can be anxiety associated with this as well. Um, but it's also really exciting. It's exciting for me every year uh, to watch this. It's exciting for the kids um, to research schools and to start to think about what next year will look like. I think we are all collectively looking forward to the fall of 2021. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to the environment that you're in next September being completely different than the environment we are in now. So um, don't lose that sense of excitement as you go through this process and utilize your parents and your counselor as you go through the process as well. All right, Dr. McDonald, that is what I have. Let me Great. stop Thanks. my share. Thank you. We're going to try to go through some of the questions. I'll ask the questions. Um, feel free to jump in, Mr. Riley. Sure. Um, first question is in the Common App, is there an option to report uh, either weighted or unweighted GPA? Which score should we report? Sure, I, I saw that. Um, the first thing I would say is each college is going to get a copy of your high school transcript, and your high school transcript from North will have both weighted and unweighted GPA on them. For any college application, if they give you the option of reporting just one GPA, I would report the higher number. So if your weighted GPA is higher than your unweighted GPA, which in most cases is true, just report the weighted GPA. But just know that they will see both GPAs on your high school transcript. Okay. Um, will the school counselors provide a list of resources of where to locate scholarships? Absolutely. Um, there are great websites online. And so um, we do have on the website uh, and maybe even in Naviance, I don't know if I've updated the link in a while, um, different scholarship websites. But a quick Google search for college scholarships will give you some great search engines um, like fastweb.com, which is a, a clearinghouse of hundreds of thousands of scholarships. A lot of scholarship clearinghouse websites that you can find via Google will allow you to enter different unique criteria about yourself and will match you up with scholarships. I don't want to dovetail too much into the financial aid portion of this, but of course it's on everybody's mind. And we do have a financial aid night coming up next week, which you can give us the exact, is it next Tuesday? I can't remember. Financial aid is uh, next Wednesday night. Next Wednesday. Okay, so we do have a financial aid night coming up next Wednesday. Um, most of the financial aid that you'll receive from colleges comes directly from the institution. It's called institutional aid. And it'll be based on your academic performance in high school as well as your financial need. Um, but outside scholarships do exist. Uh, and so, yes, if you reach out to your counselor, uh, your counselor can provide you with his or her favorite scholarship website. Again, one that comes to mind immediately is fastweb.com. Thank you. Can, can Naviance be matched to the Coalition app as well? Uh, we would love it to be matched to the Coalition app, but unfortunately at this point, it's not. We still send electronically. So uh, the, the process for sending college applications, whether it's Common App or non-Common App or Coalition App, um, 
works the same for us. Everything goes electronically. Again, the only difference with the Common App platform is for Common App schools, instead of sending our high school materials directly to the school admissions office, that material goes to the Common App platform, and then it is packaged with the student's application once they submit. Um, there's some competition, as you would imagine, between Coalition App and Common App, and uh, to date, Naviance hasn't had that same partnership with Coalition App. But in terms of requesting transcripts, it works the same for any schools the students have. I should also mention that a very few schools out there um, still will not accept uh, supporting materials from the high school electronically. They want something that, uh, to be mailed. So if you do end up with a school on your list that requires transcripts or recommendations be mailed, we will do that. Uh, in past years, we've asked students to bring us postage, a stamped addressed envelope. We will not do that this year. Uh, we will mail that, of course, as a courtesy directly from the office. So that was one of the questions, too. If you have, say, um, an additional documentation, unusual extracurriculars or other something else that you want to document, how do you do that in your college application? Is, can it be done through, besides just an essay or listing it on the application? Sure. Sure. Um, many colleges will have room for additional statements or extenuating circumstances. Common App is no exception. So you're going to find that not only in Common App supplements, um, but I believe is a part of the standard Common App form. I haven't looked at it in a couple of weeks, but you would have an opportunity to discuss extenuating circumstances, which would certainly be appropriate this year. For non-Common App schools, uh, students, in addition to essays, uh, could have the chance to upload forms. So that would be a possibility as well. So including like if I have a, um, a an additional letter or, uh, you know, a uh, certificate or something I want to add to my portfolio. Sorry, can you repeat that again? So if I have a letter or something that I want to add uh, in addition to what's in Naviance, uh, you know, certificate, for example, just documenting some ad additional um, activity that I participated in. Right. G generally, that's going to be a part of your activities resume. They're not going to require the actual certificate. Um, part of Common App and other colleges, they ask you to talk a little bit about what you're involved with outside of school. Um, but uh, particularly with Coalition App, there's, there are supplemental areas that you could share with the school. So it really comes down to um, each individual school. Keep in mind that your application has a lot of pieces. So a less is more approach really works well. As you stated earlier, um, keeping that college essay to the proper length, keeping that activities resume to the proper length and is, is really important. Thank you. Somebody asked about uh, just resources available for applying to international schools. Um, it really depends on the school. International schools obviously vary so much in terms of what they require and we do have plenty of students apply to schools um, in Europe, Canada, India, China, you name it, um, all over the world each year. We find that each school is a little bit different so our best resource would be that school's website. Um, in most scenarios the student would come to the counselor and say hey I'm looking at this particular school um, and their requirements are a little bit different. Many many international schools accept electronic submission through Naviance. So for a lot of these schools, the process is going to be absolutely the same um, for the students, which is requesting transcripts and supporting materials through Naviance, and then uh, we will send directly to those schools. But for a school that has a little bit different admissions requirements or information, um, we would just work with the student individually on those requirements. Great. I will just also add, uh, we are in the process of trying to put together an evening presentation specific on international schools. Uh, hopefully, we'll get that information out to you shortly. Um, it's something that we have not done in the past, but we recognize that a number of our students have interests overseas. Uh, so stay tuned. Um, Mr. Riley, can you talk a little bit about just the differences, again, between early action, early decision? A question came in, how many early action applications can I submit versus early decision and then sure. uh, early decision to how that plays out? Sure. I really probably glossed over that, so I apologize for that. The most common admissions types that you're going to see 
are rolling admissions, uh, which rolling admissions is simply you can apply first come first serve um, whenever you want. They will accept applications throughout the school year. Um, in that case, obviously, we still recommend that you apply prior to uh, prior to the end of the year, uh, ideally during the month of November. And generally, that's because those schools will reach a decision um, once they've received all your materials within uh, within a few weeks. Uh, other very popular admissions types is early action. Early action differs from early decision in that the early action schools uh, agreement is not binding. So you can apply to as many early action schools as you would like. Uh, the term early action simply means that they have a certain deadline and if you get in the application by that deadline, they will generally promise to get you a response um, in a pretty quick amount of time. So an early action deadline of 11-1 or 11-15 might guarantee a response by the end of January or within four to six weeks. That term early action is used by the schools, again, to encourage kids to apply earlier rather than later. Um, another question just with regards to um, listing courses on the self-reporting transcript. Are we only listing senior courses or are we listing all of our courses? Rutgers, for there, example. Sure, sure. For Rutgers, for example. Um, and actually, again, more schools each year are going to the self-reported transcript. Um, it's easier for the schools to have kids uh, enter that information themselves. Um, you're going to need to enter coursework for all four years. And I saw a question earlier uh, about option two coursework. That would include any outside coursework that's been approved uh, because option two courses will, of course, be on your transcript as well. Um, so self-reported academic record gives you the opportunity to list any courses you've taken in high school and the grades for those courses. That's a popular question that we get from our students um, because there are so many, so many little variations in that SRAR form. They can simply just reach out to the counselor if they have a specific question and say, hey, what, what type of course would economics and social problems be classified as? Or how many credits should I list for PE when there's not an option for 3.75? Those are common questions for SRAR. But yes, they, they're looking for all four years of high school. Okay, if I have a recommendation from somebody outside of the school district, how do I submit that? Or say um, a teacher retired? Sure. So for outside recommendations, again, Common App has an outside recommender option uh, that I went over at the beginning of the presentation. So a lot of Common App schools will allow you to send an email through Common App to an outside recommender. And then that outside recommender uh, would use that link to upload their recommendation directly to the student's Common App account. And then that recommendation would go to uh, each of the Common App schools that um, accepted an outside recommender. If a student is applying to other schools and they want an outside recommendation, but they don't see that feature as a part of the application, they could also have that outside recommender email their recommendation um, directly to that institution's admissions office and ask that recommendation to be included in that student's application. If we have, if a student is going to have an outside recommender, send a recommendation directly to a non-common app school in that fashion where they're, where they're emailing directly to an admissions office, we would encourage the recommender to include the student's birth date or application or applicant ID so that that um, recommendation ends up in the correct uh, file. Okay, great, thank you. Um, question was asked regarding quarterly grades versus uh, semester grades. Um, do we have to send those in, for example, first marking period grades? That's a great question. Um, generally, you do not. Uh, very, very few schools want first marking period grades. Um, Mid-year grades are much more popular. Uh, for instance, for most Common App schools, they'll ask for a mid-year grade report. Uh, for most schools that you apply to, you'll simply need to go to their website and see what type of grades they're looking for. Uh, there's always a rare exception where a school will reach out to a student and ask for first marking period grades, um, but it's, it's pretty unusual. In that circumstance, the student generally would just send a copy of his or her first marking period 
report card. Uh, but first marking period report cards don't come out until close to Thanksgiving and mid-year grades are posted about six weeks later. So for most schools, they're not looking at first marking period grades. Uh, they really wanna wait for that first semester. Does the school have a ranking or percentile system? Is that shared with colleges? Um, we don't. We have a no-rank policy, uh, which is a very common practice of, of, uh, among competitive high schools uh, because our median or average GPA for our kids is uh, well above a 3.5, um, which is certainly outstanding. It's going to even be a little bit higher uh, with this current class because of the spring. But we don't share that information with colleges. Uh, we do let them know on our high school profile, which is a document that goes with uh, each transcript, a little bit about our school and our community. One of the things we share on our profile is our highest possible grade point average and uh, the average grade point average or the range of GPAs for our top 20% of students. And we share that general information so that colleges can have a rough idea of um, what our class looks like overall. Again, the object for us is not to disadvantage individual students because they attended a really competitive high school. Um, we want this high school experience for you to really stand out, and it does. Uh, but we don't share specific GPA information. Okay, um, a couple more questions here, Mr. Riley. Appreciate you answering all these in great detail. Um, sure. The how long should I submit my uh, request for a transcript prior to the application being sent or the deadline? Sure, we're really looking for three weeks. We're not going to be counting to the specific day, and we understand that sometimes. Um, you know, last minute decisions need to be made or emergencies happen, but I can't emphasize enough because we're going to be processing over 3000 transcripts this fall. Um, it will be very difficult for a student to add a transcript request the night before a college deadline and have a counselor or the school get that out on time. Um, generally, the schools are generally colleges are a little bit flexible, have a little bit of flexibility when it comes to receiving materials from high schools. They're not as flexible when it comes to their deadlines for students. So we ask that above all, students really stick to that posted deadline. Um, but that's why we ask for three weeks um, lead time. Again, I know that might sound excessive, but remember, we're asking you to let us know three weeks in advance. We're not asking you to apply to colleges three weeks in advance. So if you have an October 15th deadline, we'd like you to let us know um, by the end of, let's say, next week, uh, which would be the you know, 26th, 27th uh, or so of September, and that will give us enough time to process that transcript request. If you have a November 1 deadline, uh, we would certainly like to know uh, by October 10th or 11th um, so that we have time to prepare. And of course, November 15th, we'd like to know by October, October 24th or so so that we have time to prepare those initial documents. Once we've sent initial transcript requests for you, again, the process becomes much easier for us because we have completed those forms, completed those recommendations already. But certainly for initial requests, we want you to give us plenty of time so that everything gets to the schools by their prescribed deadlines. So there are a number of specific questions, individual situations, I would encourage you to ask your school counselor. I'm gonna take one more question that I think applies pretty much to everybody. Uh, and, and just questions regarding specific to the class of 2021, um, how do we see this playing out in terms of the admission cycle? Uh, you know, I'll take an initial stab and then please Mr. Riley join in. I mean, I, I think this is uncharted waters. We're not, nobody can tell you exactly how this is gonna play out. Uh, we know certain factors regarding test optional. We know that that's going to force some schools to be more holistic and first and foremost, look at the academic side in terms of uh, what I mentioned earlier, the rigor, uh, the, the program of studies that you uh, partaked in over your four years in the district. Those are all things that I think work really well to our students advantage. Um, and then the quest, there were some questions about um, those students that deferred right from the class of 2020 how does that impact the class of 2021 i think that's a fair question to ask an admissions rep when you're having that's that a conversation great, that's um, actually a great question 
because I would assume that if you, uh, you, 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 know, you essentially decided to defer for a year, then that's one less spot for the class of 2021. But that's a, a good question to ask, um, you know, in terms of is the process gonna be more competitive or less competitive? Uh, certainly it's been more and more competitive in terms of seeing, uh, you know, the, the average acceptance rate at your top tier universities continue to decline. Uh, and, and that's twofold. Number one, there's, there's more students, less spots. Uh, number two, there's online applications made, that make it easier than ever to apply to colleges and university. There's international students. So there's a lot to be said about the competitiveness of it. But uh, that said, there's still a tremendous amount of great schools out there. And this goes back to kind of what we talked about before, finding that right fit and looking at things um, unique to you and how you match with that school and what are the things that you're bringing to that particular school and that institution. Yeah, you and I talked a little bit about this earlier, and it's a popular conversation in the guidance office. Um, the first word that comes to mind is unprecedented. Um, I can give my best opinion and my best professional guess, but it's going to vary a little bit from school to school. Um, overall, I do not see it having a negative impact at all on the class of 2021, quite the opposite. Um, I expect acceptance rates to creep up a little bit this year, in part because of what happened last year. The deferral question is an excellent one. Um, I have a college freshman this year who considered deferring admissions, and I know so many of his friends that either deferred admissions or aren't at the original schools they were looking at. So for that reason, attendance at a lot of schools um, in terms of their expected class size um, is down from what they had planned for. We had schools reaching out to us, and I say we, we, I mean the counseling office, last spring and summer practically begging us for students because they had so many students opting out and going to either local schools like the Rutgers or um, doing a two-year school or a gap year and things like that. So the big, the, the great question about the deferrals and other situations is what does it look like this year? And, and the simple answer is we don't know. However, the colleges and the number of students that they have enrolled this year for almost all of the colleges is well below what they had anticipated for last year. So certainly I don't anticipate a situation where um, the admissions rates are going to be overly tight. Those kids that deferred, a lot of them are taking classes elsewhere, which means they're going to be applying as transfer students, upperclassmen. And that's a whole different cohort than first year admissions. So as first year, as students for first year admissions, you are not competing with graduates from the class of 2020 that, again, took classes at a different school this year or are taking classes at a local two-year college different spots. So they're looking for spots in that, in that second year class at that university, and they'll be fine. Um, also, colleges are very unsure of what their yield is going to look like this year. In other words, they know that in years past, they've accepted a certain number of students and a certain percentage has accepted. They can really, they have to throw those numbers out the window because they don't know really who's gonna say yes or what, you know, where we're gonna be next March or April. So for that reason, I would anticipate that colleges are going to be much more generous in terms of their acceptance percentages because they don't want to end up in the same position they were last year where they didn't accept enough students and then they didn't have enough um, kids enrolled on campus. Um, so for those reasons, if I had to guess, I would say acceptance rates are going to be um, higher. The other thing I wrote down when you were speaking is holistic review. I think that's gonna be a great advantage for this year's class. Um, it's really gonna force admissions counselors, the absence of standardized tests, um, to refocus how they are looking at students, to look more heavily, certainly, at the high school curriculum uh, that they have uh, experienced. Um, and that is gonna be a big advantage to our students as well. Um, what the colleges do have, they might not have a standardized test score for a lot of our seniors, but they do have average SAT and ACT scores for our last year's seniors and past classes so that they can predict what that average West Windsor Plainsboro student looks like and what they're going to do academically if they're accepted to the school. 
Um, so in some cases, the legacy of the reputation of our district is really going to be an advantage in the absence of standardized test scores. But with all that said, your best resource for questions like that is going to be admissions offices at these as each individual school. Schools were impacted differently last spring in terms of their incoming classes and what they're going through this fall in terms of how much space they have and how that's going to affect what they're doing with um, current applicants. Um, it's not going to increase, you know, Harvard's acceptance rate is not going to go from 6% to 22% this year. So we're not talking about anything like that. Um, but I do anticipate uh, that I do know that schools are hurting in terms of enrollment from last year. And let's not forget the financial impact of what's going on over the last six months. There were hundreds of thousands of students and families that were anticipating that they could afford a four-year college and can no longer do that and have had to change plans and go the two-year college route or a state school route versus private. So again, for that reason as well, um, there might be less competition this year for spots um, in your upcoming class and certainly for the, the current class that just began. So I, I'm pretty optimistic in terms of, of the entire process, but it's going to vary school by school and it's unprecedented. So we don't really know. Great, thank you, well said. Um, I'm going to wrap up this evening's presentation. We really appreciate your time and patience with us this evening. As I said, there's a number of other questions, uh, more specific to individual scenarios. I would uh, encourage you to follow up uh, with your, your child's school counselor. Uh, we're, we're going to continue to have these conversations on an individual basis and with kids in small groups uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, reach out. Uh, don't be shy about asking questions that you're not sure on. That's why we're here. Uh, we will post this presentation uh, up on the district website, again, under uh, department counseling, high school counseling, uh, college admissions. So uh, if you're not following us on Twitter at WWP Counseling, I'll also make sure that that gets tweeted out as well. Uh, be well, stay safe, and uh, have a good evening. Thank Great. you. Too. Be well, everyone.